Okay. Hi, everybody. Hi, Hi. Joe. My name is Joe. Oh. And I'm Brandon. I'm Brianna. I'm Olivia. So today we're going to be talking about Sicilian masculinity and stereotypes because it's something we talked about in this class a lot. And I thought it was interesting. So I'm going to make you guys interested in it. And I want to hear your opinions, your thoughts. So, what image comes to your mind when you think of Sicily? And how do you picture somebody from Sicily? So first, it's sort of like, what do you think Sicily like looks like? Has anybody been to Sicily? I haven't, but I want to go. Whenever I think of like that general area, all I can think of like and imagine is like the Greece kind of setting with like the like the island, like the houses where they're like on the like the rocks. Yes. And like the big steep stairs that are basically falling apart. <laughs> And then you got like the coast right next to it with the ports and stuff. What do I think picture from someone like from someone from Sicily? Yeah. I'm honestly like, like I think kind of like, like for men like a short kind of stout <laughs> man and like a tall kind of like lengthier woman. That's yeah. That's what I think of. I like that. Yeah. Whoa. This is what Sicily looks like. Whoa. whoa, whoa. Pretty. Whoa. I want to go <laughs> so bad. Like, you have no idea. Me too. Because so my grandparents are on my mom's side are from Sicily, so. It's pretty. It is gorgeous. This is Airbnb. Britannia. Beautiful. Sicily. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. Let's go. Let's make a trip out of it. Okay. okay. I'm there. <laughs> I will book it right now. But that's the problem with Sicily is that it's too beautiful. Because it's too photogenic and it's a quality that often prevented the directors who approached it from communicating its truth. That's why we see these false stereotypes come out of Sicily, which is annoying. So Sicilian stereotypes. On the individual level, hot-headed. People call me hot-headed. I don't <laughs> like that too much. I really don't. Everybody is also assumed to be in the mafia, have some association with the mafia. I don't like when they say that either. Because it's not true. It's like, you could say that about, like, you could pinpoint anything about any group of people. Like, not saying Italians are marginalized like that anymore, because that's not a thing. And then in film, they, like, the guys have mustaches, they use props, like a gun, and all that. And then they wear caps, and the women wear this long, drab black clothing. Like, in most of these films that we've seen. Like, this film, Seduce and Abandoned, which I loved. It was dope. But you see this dude, his name, I think his name is like Don Vincenzo or something like that. He's got his mustache, he got his little cap on. Yeah, well, it's, The girls wear like the long dragon stuff. It keeps the stereotype of like every Italian has association with the mafia, like yeah. you said. Like they gotta keep it formal, they gotta look spiffy, they gotta look nice for their family. Exactly. Like, like you need to represent, like it's all about being loyal to your family. Like, keeping, this is all about keeping his family's um, like name well like keeping it high ranking because he was like kind of a high ranking dude so that's what he was trying to do in it and then i feel i think she i don't remember what happened to her but she got pregnant or something like that i forgot sorry professor but it was a good movie and the, her in her image was tarnished but he was trying to be like all happy and shit so whatever challenging sicilian stereotypes so this dude, he was from like a mafia-ridden family. His name is Pepino. And I know Pepino. Pepino. He's kind of cute. The guy that played him in the movie, The Hundred Steps, was cute. I'm not going to front. But so he's from this mafia family that his uncle got killed by the mafia. And he wasn't having it. So he went all like leftist, communist, like anti-mafia. And he ended up getting killed by the mafia because he was anti-mafia. Like, and it also takes place in Sicily, so it's all about like just getting away from that lifestyle. But the lifestyle always follows you, which is. Yeah, I like the thing that you point out. Just in this photo, we can see the way he re presents himself doesn't yeah. align with because it's true. Like he's trying to stay away from all of it, and so he doesn't look like it. Like he's yeah. wearing a like a like a sweater with a college shirt underneath. Like, the mustache and then that distinct black, like, poof underneath. Yeah. No, he looks like he'd go to New Paltz to be, like, a New Paltz <laughs> yeah. professor. I'm not gonna lie. He really does. He would just yeah, tell definitely. he looks more relaxed. Like, he's, like, got the yeah. add on. He's yeah. Like, like, he's not trying to, like, mean mug it or anything. Yeah. So, because being Sicilian, it's all about, like, 
you're more street smart than book smart. That's the image that you want in a Sicilian stereotypical world, mm. but not not my guy Peppino. Peppino, never, never Peppino, Peppino <laughs> supremacy. Come on. So, Peppino's like masculinity and sexuality. You don't really know. Like you know, he's kind of like gay, but because it's a, it took place and like, these events took place in the sixties. Um, that wasn't accepted by Italians or by like the left, like the Marxist left. So it was just kind of like weird because if this happened in 2000s, like if he was doing all this like progressive stuff in the 2000s, it would have been like, yeah, he's gay. Like what about it? But he couldn't, the director didn't have his sexuality as a priority, which is kind of weird because if you're releasing a film in the 2000s, why not just like air it all out? So I thought that was kind of like sketch, but yeah. I guess so, it was more for, like, a realism aspect of yeah, the movie. Yeah, exactly. So. So that's kind of, like, funny, I guess. And Italian-American stereotypes. That's what I know we're looking forward to. So on an individual level, mobsters, mama's boy, only care about food and wine and, like, raviolis, bigoted <laughs> thugs. <laughs> and then in popular culture, Jersey Shore. We've all watched Jersey yeah. Shore together. Yeah. We do it like twice a week. Get crazy, get loud, <laughs> get dirty, get loud. So later we're going to talk about how the show has impacted how Italian Americans are viewed and like taking alcohol out of the question, what causes the cast to act the way that they do? Like, are they building off of old stereotypes or are they trying to push this new like Guido culture? And like, where does the Guido culture come from? And then... It says Italian American male characters are commonly stereotyped as gangsters, Italian buffoons, or a street tough, and the women have been portrayed as the serious bombshell or the overbearing Italian mama. We're gonna dive into this in the next slide, where we see yeah. Street Tough, the bombshell, J Wow, and Vinny with his mom, the <laughs> overbearing mom. You know, in the show, yeah. she comes in, she's always like, I got the Entenmann's cookies, I yeah. brought the raviolis, like, she doesn't yeah, play around. Showed up at the house and had like a feast. Feast, yeah, like, prepared. Exactly. Yeah. So like that one. doesn't help the stereotype that like all Italian moms are overbearing. Well, I'm gonna be like cooking to yourself. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, are there any American films or TV shows you've seen that depict Italian American stereotypes? Well, I mean, we can like instantly pick the first one that you think of, like Godfather. Yeah, yeah the Godfather. The, series, the whole. The trilogy. Yeah. Oh, no, uh, totally. Joey Tribbiani from Friends. <gasps> yes, I didn't yeah, even think of that. Yeah, oh, that's wow. a good one. Yeah, oh my god. Like, he always is like, he always talks about food and is like always hungry and all that stuff. And he's yeah. like, and he's, got, like, all his and he's like, not like, you know, he's like more street smart than like, you know. Like, exactly. He's like kind of dumb in the show and like he's always, mm -hmm. you know, he's like a womanizer. He has like a ton of sisters, like huge family. Yeah. And, like, that everybody. is so, yeah. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. I'm not a Friends watcher like that, but that's yeah, so true. I don't true. watch Friends like that either. But, but I know, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. everybody just, knows Joey Tribbiani. Like, 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 I know his whole government. He's like, how you doing? Yeah. Like something in like Italian cultures that they're big with like on like big families and stuff like yes. that and like yeah. and they had there was an episode in Friends where there's like they're having like a feast in Joey's house and it's like him and like his like ten sisters yeah and it's just oh, like, yeah. God. like this big family thing yeah like, the whole feast and the food and all that so that, that was a good that was a good one. yeah no, that I was, was just, so like, good popped like, into my head I was like I was like oh wait um, Jesus all right so the Godfather <gasps> I called that one he called it. So Sicily plays a key role in The Godfather since it's where the Corleone family is from, but the film has played a key role in bringing Sicilian stereotypes to an international audience and influencing the Italian-American stereotypes we see today. Boom. So masculinity, it's all about being obedient, being obedient to your peers in the mafia, your superiors in the mafia, and Vito. This guy, you know, he's the guy that like pets the cat. Mm -hmm. That's why people be like, yeah, try to be all slick with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so his is a masculinity that doesn't need to exert power actively because the institution he has built on his own terms does it for himself because he's just a G, I guess. <laughs> I haven't seen this movie in so long, but I was like, I know The Godfather like that. So there's a disclaimer. And in like the beginning of The Godfather. Ow. Are you okay? Yeah. Good. So it says, The Godfather is a fictional account of the activities of a small group of ruthless criminals. It would be erroneous and unfair to suggest that they are representative of any ethnic group, which 
it itself is ineffective because by the time you see the disclaimer, it's like, okay, like all this stuff happened. I'm really going to remember a disclaimer at the beginning or end of the movie. I forgot which one it was. But exactly. Like, you don't care. It's you like, don't even know if it was at the beginning of the end. Exactly. I'd be snacking on popcorn. If I see words pop up on the TV, I'm going in for the second scoop at that point. Mm-hmm. Like, it's really just here one minute, gone the next. Yeah. So, I found this quote from, oops, from the research I did. It said, the disclaimer demonstrated a recognition that entertainment films do, in fact, teach possessing the power to create, reinforce, and modify public images about ethnic groups, including Italian Americans. So it just shows the impact that films have on people, subconsciously or, like, consciously. Like, it does affect the way you think, even though, in this case, it shouldn't, because this film came out in, like, the 70s, and that's when, like, Italian American immigration was like a big thing. So it's like you see this and you think, oh, all these Italians are coming in, they're gonna like beat us up, put us in the mafia, tie us down. And it's kind of messed up. It's very messed up. But it's not an issue anymore today. But at the time, it could still shape like things that we see in culture today regarding Italians. Also, sorry, I just thought no, of another it. thing. Um, <clears throat> uh, like in musicals, this, uh, another thing is. Uh, you have Jersey Boys, and mm-hmm. you have, uh, um, what's that one, uh, West Side Story. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, you yeah. have Jersey Boys, you have, like, the, you know, they're, they're, before they get their stardom, they're, like, the rough, tough guys, and you have the mom mm-hmm. who's always worried about their sons, and then you have West Side Story where the other half is, like, you know, you have the Spanish side and you have the Italian, like, thugs and all that. So. Yeah. No, that's also really good. You're Sorry. so smart. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the impact of The Godfather on Italian-American stereotypes. So both Italians and non-Italians argue over, like, how valid it is to, like, the mafia. Because if you're in the mafia, here's my thing. is like, nobody's going to say this is what happens in the mafia. Like, there's really going to be no true account of what goes on in the mafia because yeah it's like fight club yeah it's like fight club it's like sicilian code of silence is called omerta like you don't talk about what goes on like in the mafia you're loyal to your family you don't talk about it so that's that and this chick from the new york times says the godfather stereotypes italian americans as gangsters or as half admiring half fearful pawns of gangsters the authentic details of how a bride receives money gifts at a wedding or how spaghetti is cooked only gives credibility to that central lie about Italian Americans, which is true. Like there's really, I don't know how authentic it could be. I don't know. Like That's just, trail. yeah. Like how authentic can it be regarding the mob? Even though like the mafia is so glamorized in the movie to begin with, like it reminds me of mob wives, which we'll get into. <laughs> Everybody loves me. Everybody loves Big Ash. She is not wearing those long black drab clothes. She lets the girls hang out. He peed a little. Yeah, oh, he peed a little. She just does her thing. Like I said, Sicilian code of Omerta. Omerta, She has a tattooed on the back of her neck because she's that loyal. Rest in peace. Rest in peace to the homie. Like. I love Big Ange. She was only good vibes. Like, she wasn't spreading, like, anything about, like, you need to eat this, you need to do that. She was just rocking, doing her own thing. Like, she's been yeah. with a bunch of different guys. She's got kids. She's got this and that. But she was never, like, the overbearing mom. She's actually, like, kind of empowering because she did what she wanted to do. She didn't need... Because there's that thing where it's, like, if you're an Italian guy, you need to be... You need your wife to be obedient to you. She was... She talks about her former husband, Neil, and she's, like... He's a sanitation worker. He doesn't do anything. She's like, I'm going to the bar. I'm going to work tonight. And I love that about her. But back to Jersey Shore. This is an issue. I know we love the show. I know we love the show. But I feel like we weren't old enough to see like its true impact. Because we were like 5th, 6th, 7th grade when it came out. And I feel like if you go on like somebody's Facebook, like my older sis, like my sister's Facebook... You see, like, the way she dressed. She, like, wanted to be looking like Sammy. Mm-hmm. And it was just funny to me because it's like everybody wanted to be like a Guido, a Guida. Yeah, I remember I went to, like, the Jersey Shore, like, when, like, in, like, 2012, 2013. Shut up, so like, did in, I. When like, they were, like, in, filming? No, yeah, no, not when they were filming. They were gone at that point. But we passed by the house a couple times. But, like, yeah. the influence, like, in the entire, like, that whole area just from, like, the show Jersey Shore was, like, crazy. It is and crazy. It, like, I don't know, it definitely, like, was a, like, a craze at the time. No, like, 
It still is. They still have like the shore stores still mm -hmm. open and all that stuff, and it's like everybody there. Yeah. It is very like conservative over there, and I feel like that's another thing we could like unpack. But that's so much to unpack right now. Sorry. Yeah. Well, they're like it was so famous that like even if you didn't watch the show or you were too young to watch the show, whatever you it was, like, there it. was certain oh, things yeah. that you knew about, like the Snooki poop. Every yeah. single exactly. Person yeah. knew about it. Yeah. I remember Whether when Snooki got around. arrested. Yeah. I walked into my my deli by my house, and it was like on the front page of the newspaper. It was like free Snooki. <laughs> Oh or like snooky cups, whatever. Yeah. So yeah. So they say that this study that I found says that Jersey Shore undermines the stability of Italian American identity by conflating it with Guido and Guida culture and defining the latter in terms of practices and attributes that are that are available for appropriation. I can't really talk tonight. Sorry, <laughs> everybody. But I feel like yeah. Do you agree with this? And I feel like. Yeah, I feel like Italian American culture shifted after Jersey Shore was released. Yep. Well, I feel like it did. I Not family wise, but yeah. I think like our age wise and like millennial yeah. wise, I think it had a shift. Well, I do think like the Guido and Guidette culture kind of gives off that like if you aren't acting the same way that they are with their like, you know, the GTL, the gym tan laundry, yeah. like yeah. if you're not getting your nails done, you're not tan whatever, like, if you're not living up to that, mm -hmm. then you're, like, a fake Italian. Like, exactly. they kind of make it seem like the Guido and Gu Guida culture is, like, the deal, yeah, like, Italian It's like the end all be all. And yeah. if you're Italian, that's how you should be acting. Yeah. Exactly. Meanwhile, half of them aren't even Italian. Like, what? j -Well's, did you know that? j -Well's not Italian. Yeah. j -Well's not. Snooki's not. Yeah. That's not half of them. <laughs> that's two. But, like, still, like, but you still, would think that, like, yeah. Because they have so much impact on the show. It's like... They're and they're like here the face for... of the Guidette. Yeah, yeah they and are. They literally are. They're like, like the Guidette power couple. Yeah. So, here's what they have to say about what makes you a Guido or a Guidette according to the Jersey Shore cast. Situation says, a good-looking, smooth, well-dressed Italian. Ronnie says, a guy that always looks prettier than his girlfriend. Classic Ronnie move. Um, Polly says, it's a lifestyle built around family, friends... He was good there until he went to tanning and gel. Um, Sammy, somebody who knows how to club it up, takes really good care of themselves, has pretty hair, cakes on makeup, tan skin, wears the hottest heels, pretty much they know how to own it and rock it. I feel like it's a lot of like physical. Yeah, yeah. yeah they it's really do look care about looks. Like, yeah. It's all about appearance, I feel yeah. like. Mm -hmm. It's not about like being with your family. Yeah. Paul, he's the one that's got it closest to that. He says family yeah. and friends, but like, yeah. but then he that's says, hey, any he culture. Jump, you know? Yeah. yeah. So. I feel like it kind of like boils it down to like make people associate it with like, with really tan people. Like mm -hmm. people who are like really tan, whether that's like real or fake. And like the gel, like the hairstyle, like his hair is always like, you yeah. Know? I feel like it just like associates, has people associate. Not like, totally Guido, agree. Like a Italians, Guidos, Guidettes with like a certain type of like look, mm -hmm. which might be like damaging. Yeah. And I feel like this, I feel like you could, really, you could relate this to, like, the earlier, like, Sicilian stereotypes of, like, not being hot-headed, but, like, but pre would, presenting would, yourself okay, in a way that's not authentic. Like, they, they would fight, fight a lot. You're right. And it was, like, they, obviously, like, alcohol was involved on the show, so that was, like, the reason for a lot of, like, the drama and, like, the fights and everything that would go on there. Yeah, but, like, true. I feel like that still contributes to, like that stereotype in some way like that's kind of like the lifestyle that's like part of the lifestyle when like being young and like in that kind of setting exactly so i feel like yeah i feel that totally plays a part i feel like that stereotype is just not going away so that kind of sucks but whatever do you think jersey shore accurately represents italian americans no, no. no. me either you're yeah. italian <laughs> so am I. Yeah. do you think you're italian yeah yeah is this how, does Jersey Shore characteristics happen in your house? Do oh, Jersey Shore qualities? pastier than Pillsbury <laughs> Doughboy. Shut like. up. But yeah, that's the thing. It's like, I, like, yeah, I'll get into, like, not fights like that, like, with my family, well, with look, my but friends. But the thing is, like, my, like, you'll look at my mom, like, because that's where I get the Italian from, is from my mom's side. Yeah. And, yeah, Donna. <laughs> and, like how my mom grew up it was the more like the traditional italian like what home and all that like you know with like the mom always, dinners. yeah like with yeah. the mom being home cooking the food like making sure there's plenty of food for everyone to eat this mm -hmm. and that but then when like but when she grew up like how generations like 
how she grew up with her generation and it's just more kind of like you know like I will always like love my children and they'll always be my children yeah but like I know when I just can't baby them anymore and like I feel like that's what like Jersey Shore does like especially with Vinny's mom like you have her that's always only like literally whenever she sees Vinny it's always like a oh my boy my yeah. baby like this yeah. and that like here's all this food that and that blah 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 not when I walk in my yeah. house my mom goes walk the dog <laughs> <laughs> that's it my mom goes I forgot to defrost chicken <laughs> <laughs> no yeah so yeah I really I agree it doesn't accurately I don't think represent so. have we challenged these stereotypes better representation in the media exactly yeah we could make a film together about like real italians yeah real italian american families but Mm -hmm. that wouldn't that's not good for tv because it's not like there's drama drama anywhere that's what i was about to say like i don't think there's anything that will challenge the stereotype which sucks because Mm -hmm. it's like you know we know how it is and we know like in reality like jersey shore or the godfather like that isn't how it always is but i don't think there'll be anything to be like oh, this stereotype is false. Because, like, I feel like we consciously know it's false, but we still want to mm-hmm. see it. We eat it up. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, well, even though we know Jersey Shore isn't real, we're still, oh, so we're watching Jersey Shore tonight? Like, yeah, literally. Yeah. Well, that's, like, part of it is, like, the fact that, like, you know, The Godfather and Jersey Shore, like, they're so famous and so well-known that, like, again, even though we know it's not true, we all know it. We all still, like... We love like it. we all have that in part of our brains that it's just not gonna go away, um, exactly. and because it's so famous, like I don't even know if some were if someone were to try to create like a newer show that like, was showing like real Italian stuff like that, like would it would it be able to like counter Jersey Shore or something like that? Like yeah, I don't really know if it's, it's different even, audiences, it's different yeah, target it's audiences. Different, yeah. So like I don't know. So it's hard to like even get to the people who are like Jersey Shore fanatics. It's, like, yeah. Yeah. I also feel like if, like, steering away from, like, reality shows, I think it all comes down to, with any kind of representation for any kind of group or any sort of, just any kind of group, whether it be, like, women, like, people of color, things yeah. like that, like, it, it's important to have, like, people who are a part of that group, like, making those films and, like, mm-hmm. telling, mm-hmm. telling those stories and telling their personal stories, like, just to get that more of, like, more authentic and, like, real aspect and, like, Maybe there's, like, parts that are, like, that may align with, like, the stereotypes, but I think if you have people that are a part of that group telling those stories and, like, having it play out in the way that, like, they perceive it instead of, like, the way that people might think that it is, I feel like that would, I don't know, I feel like that would give a better, like, representation of, like, of that group. I feel like that that really is, like, general for any, for any group. Yeah. It's just, like, getting people behind the camera that'll like educate them and live through it yeah. instead of like just so some it, yeah i feel like it really just comes down to like diversity like behind the camera and yeah the camera, but like behind the camera telling those different stories exactly all right any questions just to wrap up <laughs> all right cool thank you guys for being here this was fun i enjoyed our discussion yeah me too it was very fruitful <laughs> and that's it thank you thank you Woo-hoo!